Welcome. Next is from uh, Calcutta yeah. IPGMER. Aruti Malo, 50 years uh, female, Hindu, homemaker, resident of Hubli uh, in West Bengal, presented with, with chief complaint of uh, breathlessness on exertion since last 10 years, giddiness and recurrent pre syncope uh, since last five years, palpitation for last one year. On history of present illness, around 10 years back, uh, the patient developed insidious onset, exertion and breathlessness with climbing upstairs or hurrying on the ground level, suggestive of NOIH class 2. Since then, patient started taking medication, but irregular. Around one year back, uh, her symptom of breathlessness was gradually increased. She felt breathlessness with ordinary uh, household activities like uh, dressing, undressing, taking bath, etc. Uh, symptom of NOIH class 3 symptom. Dyspnea is also associated with fatigue from same duration. Since then, she started taking medication regularly and with medication, he presently she can perform ordinary household activity. Uh, there is also history of paroxysmal palpitation for last one year. It was sudden onset, sudden offset, precipitated by exertion, irregular in nature. Presently, palpitation episodes are reduced with medication. History of multiple episodes of giddiness and pre syncope for last five years. Initially, uh, the pre syncope infrequent once in every three to six months. But for last one month, it occurred at two to three days interval. Episode mostly occurred after exertion and sudden standing from supine or sitting posture. Associated with light headed, but never associated with complete loss of consciousness. There are not associated with any auditory disturbance jerky limb, uh, limb movement, involuntary micturation or defecation. No history of uh, nocturnal awakening due to shortness of breath, orthopnea, hemoptosis, uh, significant cough with expectoration, wheezing or any seasonal variation of the symptom. On past history, there is no history of fever with migratory joint pain in childhood, no history of pulmonary tuberculosis, no liver disease or kidney disease or any other chronic illness. No history of diabetes mellitus, hypertension and thyroid disorder. On personal history, studied up to class 8, married, homemaker. Uh, she usually take mixed diet, no history of smoking or alcohol intake. No history of consanguineous marriage or any history of exposure to HIV. On family history, there is four siblings, two brothers and two sisters. All are healthy. Patient's father died. Uh, due to the CVA at the age of 70 years. She has a one son, he is a healthy, no similar type of symptom. On uh, in the case summary, the 50 years female presented with exertion and breathlessness with insidious onset, progressing nature, with recent one year history of arsenic symptom from NOIG class 2 to NOIG class 3, and associated, associated with intermittent palpitation and pre syncope, but no history of nocturnal angina. Uh, patients uh, give no history of suggestive of acute rheumatic fever, no history of diabetes, hypertension, COPD, and tuberculosis. So, this intermittent palpitation is uh, is it uh, paroxysmal palpitation or exertional palpitation? So this is usually pa a paroxysmal palpitation. Yeah. But you said it occurs on exertion or something. Oh, sorry, sir. Because yeah. is there an importance? How do, because in interpreting. Intermittent palpitation versus exertional palpitation. What is the difference in uh, interpretive uh, interpretively? Sir, intermittent palpitation usually indicate uh, the uh, the cause of uh, due to the arrhythmia on a resting condition. Any type of huh? sir, any type of arrhythmia like supraventricular huh? 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 that is in the uh, intermittent palpitation on the resting condition. And exertional. Uh, exertional uh, palpitation uh, associated with uh, due to the exertion or due to the ischemic cause or the uh, Wait, any, what you are saying any, ischemic uh, volume uh, volume overload why uh, why exertion with sinus tachycardia cannot lead to palpitation uh, yes sir, yes sir, yes, sir. <coughs> yes sir, and you are clearly you and and these arrhythmia are not precipitated by exertion yes sir yes sir. The AF with control ventricular rate, when you exert, it becomes high rate, it causes palpitation. So your interpretation should be correct, as Dr. Goel is asking you. Yes, sir. 
and tell me what are the things which is included in nyha class sir uh, in nyha class there is a palpitation dyspnea Uh, uh, angina uh, and what is this? So, if you are having rest palpitation, why is not NYHA class four? Why NYHA class four should include all four things, which is the maximum? But uh, sir, uh, dyspnea occur during the moderate uh, exercise. No, no. I am just asking you. Can you have a class two dyspnea, NYHA class two dyspnea, NYHA class three fatigue? And NYHA class four palpitation. How you write NYHA class in these patients? Suppose he has a palpitation with minimum exertion, fatigue with minimum exertion, but not very much dyspnea. The palpitation basically this is a subjective. Most of the time, uh, subjective. And what uh, Dr. Yad, uh, Dr. Rajesh is asking is if you have different grades of NYHA and different symptoms. Which NYHA class will you assign to the patient? Patient. Sir, sir, dyspnea is the first. Dyspnea is the. No. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. <laughs> dyspnea and angina. Uh, Suppose thing. patient is trouble with palpitation only. Yes, sir. So you will label as or uh, he is not dyspneic at all. No, sir. If the patient is have a structural heart disease with palpitation. Uh, but uh, uh, then we can put in the NYHA class. Without structural heart disease, we. Can... Uh, tell me, there are certain shortcomings of NYHA class grading, na? Should yes, tell sir. me. Yes, this often arrhythmic palpitation or never labelers class four. Yes, sir. Can, can, we, can you can you just go back to your history uh, sheet where you told about the uh, palpitation? Go back. Sir, history of paroxysmal palpitation for the duration of one year. Uh -huh. Where have you written this? Where is it? First line, first and second line. It is exertional. Paroxysmal palpitation. Yeah, but then he has written exertional. Uh -huh. Yes, that's why I am asking these all things. Ah. Uh -huh. That uh, the patient precipitated by some time on exertion. That's why I mentioned. Uh, most of the time, the history is paroxysmal palpitation. But okay. Precipitated by the exertion. No, no. You should be very clear. You have written. Precipitated yeah, by exertion. In history, what so, happens is patient tells something. He may tell anything, right? But then you have to interpret it in your scientific language as to what he is really talking about. Is he talking about exertional palpitation? Is he talking about a paroxysmal palpitation? Is he talking about palpitation at rest? So you know you have to interpret. You can't just uh, replicating patients' words is. Okay, one part of the history, but when you make the summary and thing, you must interpret it and then give us that this is exactly what is the situation. And Now, sudden offset. Then tell me the sudden offset palpitation. Which sir, of the arrhythmia causes sudden offset? Is atrial fibrillation is one of the cause of yes. sudden offset palpitation? And yes, sir. So, atrial fibrillation or AVNRT. Uh, then I, you think both have no, same no, 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 no. atrial fibrillation and AVNRT both will cause sudden offset. No, sudden no. offset will happen in what? AVNRT or AVNRT? Yeah. Usually, sir, AVNRT uh, stop sudden. No, usual. Always AVNRT. AF will not have a sudden offset. It will always be a gradual reduce reduction. It cannot. Reduce in heart rate, then it will go away. Convert to flutter, then it will go away. Two is to one block, then become sinus rhythm. Ah, so it is always gradual. And what is this? Is, uh, uh, episodes mostly occurred on uh, standing from supine or sitting posture. Now, what is this? Is there any scientific uh, this thing behind it? What is that called? What is that called? Uh, the palpitation which occurs on standing. What is that called? इंपॉर्टेंस इन दिनारी Who, who gets okay. orthostatic tachycardias? It is common in post-COVID. You see, post -COVID, huh? Post-COVID situations. Post -COVID situations. See? Yeah, post-COVID so situations. It is very common. So that is yes, why you should know about that. Actually, they have given a name to it: orthostatic tachycardia Ports. syndrome. Ports. 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 Yes. Correct. 
So that's the new thing. Okay, uh, so things are not very clear to be very frank. Go ahead, move forward. Move forward to the last summary. Uh, DD. Okay, what's your differential diagnosis? Because you are- uh, uh, There is a LV outflow tag obstruction. Now, just a sec, your first differential diagnosis is LV outflow tag obstruction. Tell me the pre-syncopy that happens in LV outflow tract obstruction. What is the what is the pre-syncopy that happens? Sir, Describe the pre-syncopy of LV outflow tract obstruction. Because you have not given that in the history. You say it occurs on standing and uh, uh, the pre-syncopy. What, what which which LV outflow tract obstruction will occur on standing? Sir, uh, usually the dynamic obstruction can precipitate uh, dynamic LV outflow tract obstruction can precipitate on standing, sir. So you are suspecting a dynamic LV outflow tract obstruction as your first possibility. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What Why should this? it happen? Why should it happen? Why should the dynamic obstruction increase on standing? Uh, sir, due to the decrease the preload of the uh, uh, there is increase the LV outflow tract obstruction. The gradient in increase and the, the LV outflow tract obstruction more increase in by standing. Yes. Hmm. What else? The second reporting is, is can be at arteric stenosis. Yes, sir. It, it also uh, give with your history. It is possible to have so much long uh, dyspnea history, five years recurrent syncope history with AS. Have you ever seen in your life? Sir, it is uh, also can present in aortic stenosis, but it's unlikely because have you ever seen oh, history? Oh, sorry. History of sorry. 10 years of dyspnea and 5 years of recurrent pre syncope in aortic stenosis patient. What is the natural history of aortic stenosis? Of valvular aortic stenosis. The of, uh, aortic stenosis, sir, usually uh, this angina occurred in 5 years, uh, uh, 5 years survival, and the uh, third. Uh, huh? uh, uh, dyspnea uh, syncope is uh, three years survival and two years is the uh, engine uh, uh, yeah, dyspnea survival. So if your symptoms are more than five years old, it is uh, unlikely it will be uh, severe yes. obstruction. And second is ischemic heart disease. Can we explain any of your symptoms by ischemic heart disease? Sir, angina uh, equivalent, well, dyspnea is one of the angina equivalent symptoms. Oh, oh no. dyspnea oh. is angina equivalent, but he will have something of, of ischemic heart disease. He will give you some history of MI, he will give you some history of uh, angina, some pain, something. You see, sir, uh, he is 53 years old, female patient, sir, she is 12 patient, 53 years old, and uh, background history of dyspnea, and, and also there is surgical palpitation and uh, so, uh, ischemic heart disease is a possibility. Atypical general symptom. And then you also put cardiomyopathy and then you also put valvular heart disease. Yes, sir. So you put everything. It's cardiomyopathy, I can take it, but ischemic uh, heart disease and valvular heart disease making How a differential diagnosis of this history. <laughs> No, which cardiomyopathy? You said already you said the LVOT obstruction, uh, dynamic yeah. LVOT obstruction. You said which other cardiomyopathy you are thinking? PCM and the restrictive cardiomyopathy can, can also present uh, like similar you symptoms. You think this patient can have restrictive cardiomyopathy going by history? No, sir. DCM is the most uh, favorite, most common. Yeah, DCM can be there, but yeah. restrictive will he'll give you uh, other histories, right? It'll give you the history of. Uh, Swelling, congestion, uh, yeah, no, no, of something. No, uh, DCM is the first. It is valvular heart, heart disease. Valvular heart. Now, uh, the first possibility itself was LVOT obstruction, in which the valve is there in the part of the LVOT, and then you put valvular heart disease. Now, what is that uh, valvular heart disease? You mean heart by, disease? Are you mean by mitral valvular heart disease by your history? Uh, uh, the patient have a long, uh, have long uh, history that with dyspnea and uh, and and there is a palpitation. That's why I put the valvular. Uh, valvular means was LVOT means aortic obstruction. You have taken. You yes, want sir. to include mitral valve disease also in this patient? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to we are also want to exclude the mitral valve etiology because uh, long standing dyspnea is there. Though there is no PND. But we uh, we want to exclude uh, mitral valve disease also. Then by history, how you can exclude it? What are the features which 
give against mitral valve involvement or what are the feature which goes in favor of mitral valve involvement in this the palpitation and the dyspnea goes favor of the mitral valve disease and uh, there is no pnd no orthopnea that indicate the uh, and the pacing group all uh, going to the disfavor of the mitral valve disease again nature of the palpitation as a nature of the palpitation the palpitation is usual in mitral valve disease to start with uh, what are the commonest symptoms of mitral valve disease are two types mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation yes sir. what is the commonest symptom of mitral stenosis and what is the commonest symptom of mitral regurgitation sir in case of mitral stenosis long standing dyspnea is the commonest and in case of mitral regurgitation uh, palpitation is the main commonest uh, uh, to start with hemoptysis is hemoptysis the uh, history एग्जामिनेशन हिस्ट्री इज अट्स नॉट वेरी क्लियर आई कुल Difficult to make a mental assessment. Hmm. On general examination, patient is alert, conscious, cooperative, oriented to time, place, percent, decubitus of choice, built and nutrition average, BMI is 19.6 kg per meter square, no ictus, clubbing, sinusitis, pallor, edema. Temperature is normal. Respiratory rate is 16 per minute, uh, thoda to abdominal. Uh, pulse rate is 66 minute, regular. high volume bifid pulse no radio radial no radio femoral delay condition of arterial wall is normal all peripheral pulse are palpable bp is 100 can you, can you give a name to this pulse sir pulses dispense pulses dispariance yes sir okay uh, bp uh, is 110 by 80 mm mercury in both upper limb jbp normal wave uh, form normal pressure no respiratory variation hepatojugular reflex is absent how you know high volume pulse you have mentioned high volume pulse and blood pressure is 110 by 80 this contradict mm. what do you mean by high volume pulse the no this is a very important question what do you mean by high volume pulse when do you say pulse is high volume the percussion wave is prominent Uh, yeah, agree when does a pulse become high volume so when the pulse pressure increases then pulse become high volume what what hemodynamic no. parameter correlates with the volume of the pulse now let us when pulse uh, increases sir when pulse which pressure which hemodynamic parameter in the pulse or the blood pressure correlates with the pulse volume sir high the, volume. Uh, so there is a two mechanism there there no, no no mechanism no mechanism the pulse pressure my question is very i think my question is very clear the pulse pressure pulse pressure sir pulse pressure right so high volume pulse means high pulse pressure yes sir okay so high pulse but your pulse pressure is 110 by 80 so is your pulse pressure high no sir so one of the two things is wrong yes sir either the pulse is not high volume or the blood pressure is not 180 very simple move forward then see on cbs examination chest is bilateral symmetrical no scar mark apex bit not visible no visible impulse over precordium parasternal region and supra clavicular or epigastric region on palpation apex bit is palpable at left fifth intercostal space on mid clavicular line Hearing in nature, LV type with medial retraction, double apical impulse both in systole uh, is present and S4 is also palpable just before systole. Uh, no palpable S2 S3 pericardial knock or no parasternal palpation. Uh, on percussion, liver dullness in right fifth intercostal space at mid clavicular line, left third border corresponding to the apex, right third border. sub standa and left uh, uh, left border on second intercostal is, is a resonant on cbs examination on auscultation s1 is normal s2 normal with normal split lv s4 is audible based at apex in left lateral position with bell of the stethoscope acha no s3 opening snap click tumor plop or pericardial knock 
is uh, is uh, third uh, heart ejection systolic murmur of grade three by six intensity crescendo decrescendo in shape best heart on left third intercostal space with diaphragm of the stethoscope uh, not radiating to the carotid murmur increase with inspiration from supine to standing and valsalva and decrease with the supine posture isometric hand grip and expression. At apex, there is a grade three pan systolic murmur to the heart in left lateral position, radiating to the axilla with diaphragm of the stethoscope, with breath held in the expiration. Intensity of murmur decrease on standing. Other system examination is normal limit. Uh, give me one thing. What is an apex bit you told? Apex is not visible. Told where conditions where apex bit is not visible enumerate, then we'll see. Yes, sir. On inspection, there is not visible, but the apex bit. Go back to the condition is not visible. Hmm. His BMI is 19 only. He is a lean and thin person. Yeah, but this is a female patient. Sir. Thin, na? Yeah. No, no. He is a female. So you see, he is not. Okay. I think that's okay. It's not visible. And it is a heaving in nature. Then this, uh, the HOCM causes heaving in nature pulse because it is a short dynamic obstruction. It is yes, not a sustained obstruction. Yes, sir. Yes. How can it be heaving? How can it be heaving? And the obstruction is mid systolic obstruction. You can say forceful. Ah, uh, forceful infrastructure. Sir, wrongly typed. Sir, forceful infrastructure. Yes. Well, there is a actually when you have a LVS core which is palpable, it is a pre-systolic impulse that you feel. And then there is a dip, and then you get the uh, again uh, pickup. So it becomes bifid or two or three pulses. I think uh, heaving is okay. It's a ventricular <laughs> apex. Heaving is okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Continue. Continue. So now coming to the final year. Hey, one thing. One thing. Go to back to pan systolic murmur. Hmm. Yes. Where the MR murmur occurs in uh, HOCM, at which sir, state MR, of systole? Sir, in MR murmur usually occur in the uh, posteriorly directed and based uh, based uh, answer uh, medially and based heart at the base of the heart. You have to axilla me radiation. Bola hai. Uh. Sir, if there is a associated with mitral valve, intensing mitral valve. Yes. Disease, so you are you are commenting that it is there is a mitral valve disease. It is not SAM which is leading your to the murmur. Yes, sir. So you have to be very. Yeah, I, do, I, I, I don't think he's sure on that. I don't think that is what he's interpreting. Is is that what you are interpreting? Yes, sir. We are yes, interpreting as a pathological MR. Mitral valve disease yes. is also yes. there. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Intensity of the murmur uh, decreases on standing. Yes, sir. Okay. So how do you explain that? Uh, how do you explain it? Just. Uh, uh, why does it decrease on standing? Sir, intrinsic, uh, say, uh, uh, usually uh, the murmur of in, uh, in HOCM, due to the uh, antimitral leaflet uh, obstruct on the LVOT, the murmur mm -hmm. is more increasing. And uh, on standing, the murmur should be increased. But in case of intrinsic mitral valve disease, the, due, to the, uh, due to the increasing the uh, decrease the preload, that's why the murmur intensity is decreased. It has to be proven. You are yeah. so sensitive that you are making it as a pathological MR by only saying one finding that murmur is decreasing while standing because usually yeah. these murmur of uh, HOCM increases on standing because yeah. there will be more LVOT obstruction, there will be more mitral regurgitation. Yeah. So, uh, these findings are very hard finding which we are explaining, which we need to explain further. Let us see. Uh, Mm -hmm. sir, uh, so this is your final diagnosis after yeah. examination but, uh, sir after examination my diagnosis is severe lv outflow tack obstruction in the form of hocm with moderate mr moderate mr explain kar do kaise kiya teen finding bata do it is not mild it is not severe it is moderate sir uh, pan uh, one is a pan systolic murmur ye to teeno mein hota hai mild mein bhi hota moderate mein bhi hota severe mein bhi hota so great three intensity 
ना ना इंटेंसिटी का कोई रिलेशन नहीं है एमआर की सीआरटी डिस्नियस है ऑन हिस्ट्री से देयर बी हिस्ट्री नो नो फ्रॉम द फाइंडिंग एचओसीएम से हो जाएगी आगे बोलो देखो जो चीज बोलो उसको तुम्हें प्रूव करना आना चाहिए यू हैव टू प्रूव इट इट इज अ मॉडरेट एमआर दिस थ्री फाइंडिंग्स आर देयर and if it is a pathological mr what is an s1 you have said normal s1 normal s3 sir absent sir normal s1 if it is pathological means mitral valve is totally diseased it should not have a normal s1 so don't tell things which you cannot justify okay see the way you have written the diagnosis no i think you have to be such a way to write a diagnosis in an exam I think you write uh, in a proper. You learn to write it in a proper way. See, this is a severe LVOT obstruction in the form of HCM. No, no. See, this is not the way. I think you uh, learn to write it properly. You say it is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. That's it. Correct. Once you yeah. come to the diagnosis, say it's it is HOCM. HOCM, severe LVOT obstruction, moderate irritation, NVH class three, and without uh, pulmonary venous. You write there uh, no pulmonary venous or pulmonary arterial hypertension. And uh, what about heart failure? What about it? All these things should come in the diag diagnosis, no? I think this is actually written. Even class three, I am mentioning. But doctor, we must tell me if there is no PVH, no PH, why patient is dysnic? He is anemic. No sir. So you yes. have to. He is a class three dysnic yes, at sir. present. So how, why is dysnic if there is no PVH, no PH? Sir, uh, due to the LV outflow type obstruction, there is increased the LV EDP. That precipitated the dyspnea. No, no. How did it happen? EDP will rise without pulmonary venous hypertension. Is there a mitral stenosis which will prevent that LV, high LV EDP not reflecting into the LA? Why? Yes. There has to be PVH, na? Pulmonary venous hypertension ho hi ho na isko. Jo you can say clinically, I am not able to say. I sir understand. Actually, I am not mentioned due to the absence of PND or orthopnea. That's why. No, no, no. That is the extreme stage. You see, PND huh? orthopnea is very high. He oh, has a LA gallop. He has a LA gallop. You, you, you picked up a S four. Yes, sir. So, what does S four tell you? The S four indicate there is the increase the stiffness of the LV. LV myocardial. Yeah. So there is some increase in stiffness, LA, and LA, for which the LA is LA, LA is contracting LA with bigger force. High LV EDP. No, so there should be high LA pressure also, na? No? If there is a high LA pressure, there should be high PVH. Yeah, yes, sir. That's why patient patient to the energy class. So there has to be some you, you know, when you make these uh, like uh, very dramatic uh, statements without PVH. Now you see he has left heart disease. He has hypertrophy obstructive cardiomyopathy. There is MR. There is restriction to the filling. LA is uh, LA gallop is there. Then uh, I think uh, you can't be so dogmatic that there is no PVH. There could be agreed. There may not be severe PVH, but yes. there is mild to moderate PVH, or at least some mild PVH will be there. So okay. don't make this is I'm just telling you in your interest. Don't make these strong statements that without PVH it is okay. not possible. Some PVH will be there. Maybe it is only mild. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Now come investigation. This is. A ECG, ECG showing the. What do you expect in the ECG? Go back. What do you expect in the ECG of this patient? The ECG is. If it is Hocum, supposing it is Hocum, and uh, we agree with your diagnosis, what what, what ECG will show? Sir, LV, left ventricular hypertrophy. Mother, uh, uh, in uh, with uh, uh, HTTF changes uh, is present. Supposing I, I ask you a question, there is a patient of concentric hypertrophy. And there's a patient of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The chance of having LVH with concentric hypertrophy versus uh, this asymmetrical septal hypertrophy, which one has a higher chance of uh, LVH? Sir, concentric, uh, concentric LVH. Sir. What In percentage of patients do not have LVH? May not have LVH. I was not do not may not have LVH. With LVOT obstruction, fifty percent, sir. There is fifty percent. Huh? Only almost fifty percent, sir. Uh, patient present with LVH. Fifty percent will have LVH. Yes. So that means fifty percent may not have. Yes, sir. Well, there could be patients who do not have LVH. So that's the important. Go ahead. Show the ECG. Sir, the ECG, uh, the sinus rhythm 
regular in uh, rate with 70 uh, heart, uh, heart rate is 75 uh, beats per minute with uh, normal PUA, with normal PR interval. QRS duration is uh, near about uh, 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 110 uh, millisecond. With uh, there is a uh, LV, left ventricular hyper, LVH type ECG with uh, deep uh, uh, TO inversion with ST segment depression from V4 to V6. What important thing you are missing in this ECG? Yeah, there is a RBP pattern hmm. in the V4. Hmm? No, what is other important thing? Uh, what happened to the Q wave? That is a very classical Q wave described in HOCM. Yes, sir. In V5, sir, v, uh, v, uh, usually, sir, septal Q wave can present in the HOCM. Kya hota usually? What is known as? You know it or not? Q2 infarct pattern. Uh, due to the myocardial uh, fibrosis or disarray of the myocardium. Uh, there may be a tall, narrow Q waves. Yes, sir. Tall, it's narrow present Q waves. Present the lateral leads. Yes, sir. V5, V6, they are present, sir. What more you will get on ECG? Sir, There's any there. paper on that? A lot of work has been done by Dr. Hari Krishnan on HOCM. So what more thing on ECG you should see in QRS complex, seeing a QRS complex, and which is evident in this uh, ECG. What do you mean by QRS fragmentation? Yes, sir, fragmentation. QRS fragmentation. Yes, now, now, now it has been it has been known as a very important cause who differentiate for long term prognosis. The patient who has a fragmentation, patient who don't have a fragmentation, so there are clear cut QRS fragmentation there. Beyond. What more thing you can have in this patient? Tell me what other ECG findings are seen in HOCM. You have told there may be atrial enlargement, LVS, T wave inversion, giant Q wave, QRS fragmentation. What more you can find? Sir, TO, deep TO, NSVT. Mm, NSVT, good. Uh, PVCs. What PVCs are dangerous? If you are seeing a PVCs. PVC. If the active fibrillation. Active fibrillation. If suppose you are having PVCs, which PVCs you will think it is not good for the patient? Short coupling yes, sir. Uh, RMT phenomenon is One is RMT, second is good. Short sir. coupling for more than 10 TVC per minute. Chalo, frequency ho gaya, RMT ho gaya, short coupling ho gaya, and multifocal. Multifocal, yes. yes sir. So you can have a lot of things on ECG. What is the chance of uh, heart blocks in HOCM? Sir, uh, sir. Well, there is less chance, 5%, less than 5%. 5% least hota hai. 5% both hota hai. Sir, go to x-ray or anything else. I go for what x-ray? Yeah, this is an expiratory film. Uh, with, uh, with slightly rotating. This is a straight x-ray chest PA view with slight rotating uh, rotating view with uh, on expiration. And uh, there, uh, so that's why we can't comment on the cardiomegan. And uh, the uh, long shadow is uh, the bongo muscular marking is normal. With, no, no, what do you mean by is there PVH or not? Yes. In this uh, X-ray. Grade one PVH is present. Sir. Grade one. Yes. Sir. How do we grade PVH? Sir, cephalization is grade one. Sir, currently uh, a B line is present in PVH. Uh, is grade two. And is a backing sign and the alveolar edema is present and get three. Sir. Okay, what is this in, the, in this patient? It's the only capitalization, sir. So grade one, sir. Okay, yeah. Cardiomegaly and PVH. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Cardiomegaly, we can't comment. No, no, come back. You cannot say cardiomegaly with this uh, expression, inspiration, how much difference it will make there. It's significant cardiomegaly. But the, the uh, clean is rotated and uh, there is also... How much rotate? I don't say uh, things which are... Uh, uh, this x-ray shows cardiomegaly. Or whether it is expiration or uh, uh, rotation, there is cardiomegaly. You, uh, you can't sort of not talk about cardiomegaly. Cardiomegaly is certainly there, yeah? Yes, sir, yes. Some some little rotation will always be there in every X-ray. 
So for that, you can't say I can't comment on cardiomegaly. So you will never be able to comment on any cardiomegaly then. <laughs> so okay, yeah, what, what else do you want? It is a little expiration. It's not a full inspiration. So yes. that's uh, certainly there. But uh, all right, we have to still interpret it. Hmm. Okay, forward. Now, coming to the echocardiography, there is an asymmetrical septal hypertrophy with IVSG diameter 29 millimeter with LVPW uh, 13 millimeter. LV IDD is 35, LV IDH is 80, LV EF is 80 percent, LA size is 50, uh, LA size is uh, 54 millimeter, been dilated, and there is a grade. You know, what is the aortic size here? When you write the LA size, you have to always write the aortic size. LA 54 is dilated, I agree, but always write the aortic size. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, time, sir. So moderate MR. Now this MR is valvular. Go back. Go back, please. This M. Go back on back, the slide. Back, back, back. Huh. Uh, moderate MR. So the MR is valvular. Uh, is it pathological or it is secondary to your um, SAM? Secondary to the obstruction. Sir, uh, sir, this is pathological and uh, there is also SAM is present, sir. No, no, what are the uh, mitral valve abnormalities which can occur in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? You tell us, what are the, in the mitral valve apparatus, there are so many uh, abnormalities which can happen. What are they? Sir, there can be elongation of both mitral AML and PML, but most of the time, there the AML is elongated and that produces the LV outflow tag obstruction, one point. Second point is, the, uh, sir, there is a, also the papillary muscle hypertrophy. Sometimes there is a papillary muscle inserted to the anteromitral leaflet without presence of body. That produces the mid wall, uh, mid ventricular. Okay, any wall. other? Any, any other? Sir, there is a number of sir, number of papillary muscles. Annular diameter, sir. Annular diameter diameter is usually uh, less than normal uh, my, uh, mitral valve annular diameter. Any any difference in the number of papillary muscles? The papillary muscle is, is the less. Sir. Single, single papillary muscle can be present. Sir. And single papillary muscle can present. Okay. Um, time is over. We have to move fast. Oh, okay. Oh, we have exceeded 10 minutes. Sir, there is a. Uh, just, show the, just show the. Uh, do you have that moving? Sir, this is the uh, ah. IVS septal is thicker. Yeah. And there is a uh, SAM is present, sir. Okay. Uh, C SAM is present, sir. More than 30% uh, system is present. Do you have a moving picture of MR? You have a yes, sir, yes, sir. There's a video, sir. Video, sir. Show the video of MR, four chamber, if you have. Yes, sir. Sir, there's a T is also. I have done T, sir. Just show the four chamber view. Just show MR and uh, yeah. This is a T for AML and uh, PML, sir. Okay. Hmm. We want to see a moving picture. Video. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, sure. This. No, no. I think you keep on playing one, and don't click on that. It will go to the next slide. That is what is happening. What you do is come back and click on the particular slide video to play. Previous slide. This is a sir, uh, slide showing the MR. Why is it moving? Uh, why is it not moving smoothly? Yeah? yeah, what does it show? Two things it shows. Yeah, what does it show? There is a elongation of the antimatter leaflet, and there is also there is a posterior mitral leaflet is thickened. Sir. With posterior, I don't think the mitral leaflets are thickened. I think this is this is MR secondary to the SAM. I think that's with this it. typical eccentric jet coming from the anterior yeah. mitral leaflet. It is yeah. it is basically a SAM, not a mitral valve. Doesn't seem to be thickened. No, it's I not thickened at all. It's not thickened at all. It is just single uh, disease complex. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, one minute should be given to management of this patient to them. Now time is over. 
management there is a medical therapy and there is a surgical therapy on medical therapy the first line is a beta blocker uh, drug of choice followed no, no, by first uh, before that we have to assess the risk for, risk stratify this patient uh, that is the first thing we have to do how do you do that how do you risk stratify who is the high risk Uh, sir, there is a history family. There is uh, if there is a family history of sudden cardiac death is present, or there is a history of unexplained syncope or LV uh, LV myocardial thickness uh, uh, more than thirty millimeter, or the LV EF is less than fifty uh, percent. And if and there the, is a, uh, I am not of, hearing anything from you for quite some time. So, uh, will you do any other investigation like a Holter or an MRI yeah, investigation? I can do the cardiac MRI. MRI. For the left gadolinium enhancement, if there is a more than five per, uh, 15 percent uh, left gadolinium enhancement, that indicates the risk of increased sudden cardiac death. Okay. Holter नहीं कराओगे, doctor Hari Krishna ने बहुत clear दिया. Simple सी चीज़ है. गांव में हो जाती है. Holter, Holter. Holter में क्या देखोगे? NSVT है. NSVT. If there is a more than uh, three Uh, with a rate at least uh, more than 200 with 10 uh, nsbt is present that indicate uh, uh, high risk yeah what did you say no i glad bola 200 nahi hai yes sir the recent guideline changed to 200 sir previously it was 120 but in the recent uh, hcm guideline it is changed to more than 200 with at least three episode and more than 10 bits of uh, nsbt sir this is a recent uh, 2020 guideline sir acc sir mm mm-hmm. then what okay. treatment what drug you will offer to this patient sir first line drug is a beta blocker followed by uh, if this is uh, uh, rate is uh, my target heart rate is 50 to 60 if it is not achieved then we go to the calcium channel blocker and uh, like verapamil uh, or diltiazem and uh, if the uh, the failure symptom or the uh, uh, not control then we can add the disopyramide sir disopyramide What is the role of diuretics? Because he is breathless. Sir, uh, yes, sir. If uh, uh, sir, judiciously we can use the diuretic to relieve the symptom of failure. Sir. What is the harm of giving lot of diuretics? Sir, there is a decrease the uh, uh, preload and increase the alveolar outflow tract obstruction. Which symptom will increase? Sir, uh, maybe uh, specific the syncope. Sir. Yes. What is, what is the new sir. drug which is uh, what is the new Mabha drug which is available? Sir, that is the Mabha Camtal. Uh, Uh, so the, okay, what will you what will you offer this patient because he has significant obstruction and uh, mr what will you offer i will offer uh, pharmacology if it is if it is not controlled by pharmacotherapy what else will you do sir i go for the alcohol septal ablation no is it uh, why the why not surgery which is better which has better evidence uh, sir uh, both are equal sir actually there is a rbb pattern is present in view one So why go for uh, alcohol septal ablation is the first. Both are both are equal means which uh, which data you are telling uh, young no, patient. No, no, no. Sir, ECG sir, there is a RDS RDS pattern present in the. ECG. No 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 no. See, you said the uh, surgery and uh, alcohol ablation are equal. So we, based on which data are you telling that? Which patient you choose for septal ablation? Sir, on septal ablation. Hold on. If there is a uh, patient in uh, older age, uh, mm. uh, more than fifty years, mm. uh, if the there is a patient, so for younger patient surgery is better. Yes, so that is where it is. You understand? Yes, yes sir. Younger yes, patient sir. surgery is better. Okay. And then, if there is a mitral valve problem, if it can be repaired, then also surgery may be a better option. Intensive mitral valve disease, then we uh, go, intensive mitral valve disease, CAD or patients of RBB. that go favor of the surgical myectomy rather than the alcohol level